Brook the Yahawa, Brokatha, Yehosha, Brook the Yahawa, Brokatha, Yehosha, Ba Hashem, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the elders, salutations to you, sincere brothers, teaching in truth and sincerity. Lesson will be entitled Hear Lizard, Lizard, Genesis 3 and 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman. And between your seed and her seed, it shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. I is referring to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, announcing judgment via a prophet on the serpent who was a man, on the woman who was Eve, and also Adam. And verse 17 okay the scripture is also symbolic the serpent seed in today's time are the Edomites based on the lineage of their fathers so the Edomites progenitor is who Esau and Cain was Esau or Salakia, Cain came back through the process of reincarnation as Esau, if you can receive that in the spirit. All right. So if the serpent is living amongst the living, he is an Edomite, so-called white people. OK, or a so-called white man. Now, the woman's seed is a representation for the nation of Israel. And in today's time, modern day, um, modern day Negroes, modern day Native Americans, and modern day um, Hispanics, based on the lineage of our fathers. And when you read Jeremiah 6 and 2, I have likened the daughter of Zion, which is another title for the nation of Israel to a comely and delicate woman. What made us comely and delicate? Us receiving the laws, statutes, and the commandments, right? So again, and I refer to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah will put enmity going into hatred between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. So again, her seed are the Israelites, and his seed are the Edomites, okay, in today's time. It shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Now, bruising our heel is symbolic for Esau ruling as the so-called Greeks, as the so-called Romans, and also in today's time, um the so-called Americans, NATO, and the EU, okay? This is an example of the Edomites bruising our heel. Now, keep all of this in mind, right? So, let me just make sure this is still up. So, when you think about a bruise to your heel, you think about a ruptured Achilles tendon. This is a very painful injury. Case in point, and also video will be used for fair use. Kobe Bryant, Achilles injury, game 2014. And though 0 for 6. As he has it, spinning in trouble. Oh, and he's limping, he's hurting. Kobe's hurting. And I don't know if he's going to be able to continue. This might be that same knee that he hurt. No, this is, is it like a different. No, this is the right foot, or the right. right leg. I mean, the injury a minute ago was to. So a ruptured Achilles tendon from a symbolic standpoint. Esau ruling as the Greeks, the Romans, pagan Rome, and in this new system, America, NATO, and the EU. Is, uh, From their reserves. Ryan again going to work. Falls down. Again, he's struggling. And eventually what happened? We fell down. We were enslaved. Okay. And he's going to stay down there for a bit. 
Time to massage that left ankle a little bit. Harrison Barnes picks up the foul. So as you can see that Kobe Bryant ruptured his Achilles tendon. And on the next possession or some possessions later, he couldn't even walk. He couldn't even play. He just fell right back down. Warriors are out as hurting, but the Lakers down by two, and they so want him to beat him at the free throw line. Got it. Yeah, not backpedaling. Okay, so. And also, this video will be used for fair use. Kobe Bryant's Achilles rupture. Doctor explains on 10-year anniversary. Let me just make sure this is still up to. Right. Okay. So. The calf muscle no longer has a tension on it. Kobe, are you convinced that it, they told us probable torn Achilles? They're going to do an MRI. Are you pretty convinced that's what it is? Yeah, I can't walk. You know, I try to maybe just put pressure on my heel, see if I could do it that way, but there's just nothing there. And that's Esau taking us down, okay? As the Greeks, as the pagan Roman Empire, and in today's time frame, America, NATO, and EU. But if anyone's going to get through this, probably you, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Shit. Maybe I should break out the rocking chair and reminisce on the toes. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Nav, and today is the 10 year anniversary since the late, great Kobe Bryant tore his Achilles tendon against the Golden State Warriors. Today, we'll be paying homage to Kobe and the Mamba mentality by breaking down this injury. We'll discuss the anatomy, the biomechanics, why this injury might have occurred, the surgery, and the recovery process. I've sprinkled in some Mamba mentality along the way just to infuse that mindset into anybody who's watching this video. Let's. Also, Genesis 4 and, and um, 12. Now, this is going to the judgment of Cain for killing Oslakia, for murdering Abel. And if you can receive this in the spirit, Cain and Abel, via the process of reincarnation, later, later became Esau and Jacob. Cain came back as Esau, and Abel came back as Jacob. Now, Genesis 4 and 12, when you till the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto you, yield unto you her strength. So that's the reason why these, that's the reason why these uh, fruits and vegetables, okay, are so poorly looking, okay, because it goes back to the curse Okay, of Cain. A fugitive and a vagabond shall you be in the earth, right? So when we go back to Genesis 3 and 15, right? This serpent later became a dragon, right? Because Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, has not exercise judgment on this serpent so over a process of time this serpent it grew and it grew and it grew and it became as a dragon hence the pagan rome empire right keep all of this in mind let's talk about the achilles tendon also known as the calcaneal tendon here is the tibia or the shin bone. The tendon connects the calf muscles, also known as the gastrocnemius and soleus to the calcaneus or the heel bone. It is the strongest and thickest tendon. So if your Achilles is ruptured, okay, you can't run, you can't walk, you can't stand, okay? You can't have true pressure. So therefore you're not stable. In the human body, the tendon and the calf muscles work together to enable a person not only to play basketball, but also perform everyday activities such as jumping, running, and climbing stairs. Whenever the foot is pointed upwards, 
We call that dorsiflexion, which stretches and lengthens the calf muscle and the Achilles tendon. When the toes are pointed downward with the calves flexed, we call that plantar flexion. In athletes, there's two very common mechanisms that lead to an Achilles tendon rupture. The most common is the push-off mechanism we'll be talking about today, where the foot is in dorsiflexion and you push off, leading to that tendon tear. The second is a landing injury, landing from a jump or from heights, which can cause extreme dorsiflexion. It's one of the reasons why you might have heard someone say, don't land on your feet flat-footed. Now let's break down Kobe's injury. As we run this clip, you'll see he has his back to the defender, Harrison Barnes. Kobe will commit to dribbling to his left side. To initiate this movement, we see him plant his left foot here. If we pause for a second, you'll see his foot is in a dorsiflexed position. Notice the left tibia or shin bone pointing towards the ground while his foot is planted. This puts a significant load or stretch on the back of his leg on his Achilles tendon. So this tendon is being eccentrically loaded, AKA lengthened as it contracts. Kind of like when you stretch resistance bands out. And then as he goes to push off of that left foot, you'll actually see the tendon ultimately look like it snaps or see this sort of pop right there. Kobe himself said, As soon as I made the move, I knew it. A common question is what is this pop that we're seeing? All of these injuries here have nearly identical mechanisms. Bottom right is Kevin Durant's injury in 2019. If you look at all of these images, you'll see that the athletes plant their foot and load the Achilles. The feet are dorsiflexed. And then when they push off, you can see the pop. The reason we see this sort of snap or pop. So the, the, the point is, Right? When our heel was bruised, we had a symbolic Achilles tendon rupture. Exercise as us going into slavery, when Esau ruled as the Greeks, the pagan Rome Empire, and in today's time frame, America, NATO, and the EU. Right? So, when we just look into some stats, right? Now, this came from a Google search. Conclusion, our study found that 72.3% of NBA players return to play after Achilles tendon repair, but they had shorter careers compared with uninjured controls, right? So as a nation, we can be considered within that 72.3% because we know via the scriptures, via the Holy Spirit, that Yahweh will save us via Yahweh Shah. So we are within that 72.3%, right? So when you go into, and that may be it. So you had examples of Kobe Bryant was actually able to come back and play as well as Kevin Durant, who is currently playing now. Also, the scripture talks about how our heel will be bruised, right? Or bruised. However, the serpent will eventually receive a bruise on the head. Now this bruise on the head is referring to what? Psalm 110 and 1. The Lord Yahweh said unto my Lord Yahweh Shah, sit you at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let's go into Revelation chapter 1 and 7. Behold, he, referring to Yahweh Shah, come with clouds, all right, the heavenly host, and they will be inside or controlling the chariots of Israel, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierce him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so to wab, wailing, because Yahweh Shah is bringing judgment, right? Starting with the nation of Esau or Edom, because they control this entire system. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19.
and verse 16, and he has on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So Yahweh Shai is going to the throne, the Edomites, as well as these other nations. And therefore, Genesis chapter 3 and 15 will be exercised by Yahweh through Yahweh Shai of Yahweh Shai bruising the head of this serpent, taking this serpent out of power and dominion forever, right? And even when you go into the statistics of a person receiving a headshot, right? And it states, and this came from a Google search, uh, what's more, the American Association of Neurological Surgeons reports that trauma resulting from gunshot head wounds are thought to be fatal 90% of the time. And most victims do not make it to the hospital at all. So if a man, woman, boy, girl receive a gunshot wound to the head, 90% of the time is fatal, right? If a snake's tail is cut off, okay, and according to my Google search, right, reptiles, reptiles, amphibians, uh, pora, it states no snake tails do not regenerate, all right? No snake's tails do not regenerate. So according to this, the tail can be lost all, so like it, the tail can be lost, so like it, the tail can be lost all the to just behind the vent without adversely affecting the snake. It will heal over and be blunt from that point on. So a snake, okay, cannot regenerate its tail if that tail is cut off, but it can live, all right, if it doesn't bleed out, right? However, when it comes to a fucking headshot on a snake, all right, you can't come back from that. That snake cannot come back from that. So although humans, and according to the probability of humans dying from a headshot, okay, it's 90% chance they will die. Automatically, it's a 100% chance if a fucking snake's head is amputated or if that snake received a fucking headshot, okay? Going back into what? Genesis 3 and 15. So when Yahweh Basham Yahweh brews or gives the serpent going into the empire or the dominion of Esau, okay, Esau would never, ever, ever, never come back into power. And I hope this makes sense. And within this spiritual dynamic, we can also add so called Russians who are Edomites. Right? So when Esau receives this headshot as a nation, right, all Edomites are going down because that blessing will be deactivated. Okay? So we can also add the scripture of Psalm 110 and verse 5. Let me start at four. The Lord Yahweh has sworn and will not repent. He's good on his word. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And that starts with Yahweh Shah. Because if you can receive this in the spirit, Yahweh Shah was Melchizedek. And the priesthood of Melchizedek is a spiritual priesthood. Verse five. The Lord at your right hand shall strike through kings in the day of his wrath. So the day of the Lord's wrath is referring to the second coming of Yahweh Shai. 
And the second coming of Yahweh Shai will also entail what? WW3. And the Russians, so called Russians who are Edomites, will be involved in that war. And guess what? The so called Russians and so called Americans who are there fighting in the Middle East will team up to attempt to take down or stop Yahweh Shai. Okay, and that's spoken of in the book of Ezra. Verse 6 He shall judge among the heathen, he shall fill the places with the dead bodies. Now, this is what Yahweh is going to do. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall wound the heads over many countries. These governments. Starting with the government of Esau, trickling down to their joint heirs, these other nations that are allies and that have been confederated with Esau within his blessing. Verse 7, he shall drink of the brook in the way. And guess what? Beginning with the nation of Esau, okay, they are the brook in that way, as well as their allies. Therefore shall he lift up the head, him lifting up the head, meaning what? Erecting the kingdom of Israel, right? That Genesis 3 and 15 is bad, man. So let's go to Genesis, so like in Daniel 7 and 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom. Remember, Yahweh is going to lift up the head. And possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And the point of this lesson again is, although a rupture Achilles tendon is extremely painful, right? It's a 72% chance that one will walk again. And in our case, it's a 100% chance. Because remember, Yahweh will deliver the elect of Israel. And then eventually all of Israel will be saved. So here, lizard, lizard, right? That serpent became a great fucking dragon. And Yahweh will dethrone that dragon, which is going into the kingdom of Edom, which also consists of so-called Russians. If their lineage goes back to Esau and not Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So Lord, will you edify Shalom.